I built this V8 for my model car back in September, and over the time I've gained quite a lot of experience, and I'm confident I can build one much smaller than this. I took the 3D model of this design, and I scaled it down three times. I've also uh, increased the diameter of the pistons because I think they look kind of small and far apart. If you want to build this model yourself, pause the video right now and take a screenshot. The information given should be more than enough to help you build the model. I'll start out by making the crankshaft. This thing needs to be 5mm in diameter, so there's a very good chance it's gonna break. I drilled a 5mm hole in this piece of scrap uh, to check the fit. The cranks and connecting rods have to be 3mm thick and since I don't have any 3mm plywood I will uh, cut down this piece lengthwise to try and make two little sheets. This is the type of situation where a scroll saw would come in really handy, but as you can probably tell, I don't have one. So I didn't record the build process of these cranks because it's essentially the same thing, but something very important, the distances between these two holes can vary about half a millimeter or so due to imprecision, uh, but since I made these two at a time, all of these pairs are identical to each other. So I'll keep them in pairs for the rest of the build. And now since they're all very rough and not exactly three millimeters wide, there's a lot of sanding needed. Looking much better now. Uh, these things are ready to be glued on the crankshaft. That should make things run a little bit more smoothly. I drilled a 12 millimeter deep hole in this block and now when I put the dowel in and cut it by resting the blade on the block, I can get pieces that are exactly the length I need. It's now time to assemble the crankshaft and I'll need to glue the first cam exactly 12 millimeters from the start of the dowel. I want this model to be a cross-plane V8, just like my previous one. But with my previous model, I made a mistake when gluing these cranks into place. I rotated, uh, rotated each one 90 degrees after the other one. And what I was supposed to do was rotate them 90, 180, and 270 degrees. And that's what I'm gonna do this time.
I prepared this uh, chunk of 40 and a half by 40 and a half millimeters of wood and I didn't cut it to length just to leave me some more room to hold on to when working with and uh, to drill the holes uh, more precisely I will set up a special jig on the drill press. I'm putting the center of the first hole 8.5 millimeters from the side, from the edge I mean, and then repeating every 15 millimeters, and over here I'm doing that 11.5 millimeters from the side. The hole doesn't have to go all the way through, it just has to go a little over halfway through. So I'd say that's the engine block pretty much finished. It's time to make the pistons now, and even though the cylinders are 13 millimeters in diameter, I'll make the pistons 12 millimeters because they don't actually need to be airtight, and I want to minimize friction as much as possible. There's a little bit more play in there than I expected, but I think they should work. If they don't, I'll just replace them. To turn this dowel into pistons, you need to do three things. You need to cut a groove for the connecting rod, um, make a hole for the pin, and cut its length. And to do that precisely and quickly, I made this jig. And the way it works is you place in the dowel in here, uh, you clamp it down so that it's held in very firm. Um, you follow this to make the groove, uh, follow this hole to make the hole, and then cut it along this line to cut it precisely to length. So the jig worked really well, it allowed me to finish the pistons in just a couple minutes. And now for attaching the pistons to the connecting rods, I'll use pins made, of made out of steel wire, because they don't need to be glued into anything, and I think that'd make them stronger. I have acquired some steel wire that should work nicely. In preparation for the assembly, I have widened these holes a little bit to run a little bit more smoothly on the uh, crankshaft. And I also rubbed everything with dry soap for lubrication. This is very important, do not overlook this step. Now you might be wondering how I plan on attaching these connecting rods to the crankshaft. Well, I hope this works. I'd say that's a success. This is getting really tedious. 
because the first rod isn't really that difficult to attach but when you're working on the second one you have no space left to work with and it is complete I'm quite happy with the end result this is the fun part So I've run into a bit of a problem. Because I increased the size of the pistons, it is now impossible to fit this assembly into the engine block. But where there's a well, there's a way. Okay, the very first test run. Right, it is very rough. I'll need to do a lot of adjustments. Um, but it almost kind of works. I made some adjustments and made a temporary setup to hold it in and it works a little bit better now. Um, but the problem I'm having now is that I made the connecting rods a little bit too wide and you can see that they sometimes hit the engine block. So I think I'll use a chisel and some sandpaper and adjust the, the engine block rather than the connecting rods. That's more like it. It is running much more smoothly now. So that's it for this video. In the next episode, I'll be making the exhaust manifolds, stand, supercharger, belt drive, and bug catcher intake.